Hey, and welcome to today's video. It's about professional lawn care versus DIY. Hello and welcome back to the Lawn Association's YouTube channel. If you do like the content, please hit that like and subscribe button for future videos as well. So today's video is all about professional versus DIY lawn care. What is the actual difference? Um, professional sounds very professional, but is it really, really different? How do you choose a, a, a great professional uh, organization to come and look after your lawn. Can you do it as well yourself? Well, today's video, we're gonna look at the contrast and the differences. Um, one thing as I'm panning around here, you can have a look at the lawn that we did. Um, we started this, remember, on the 1st of February. And this is uh, what I would call uh, domestic lawn care. This is just sustainable as well. So we used the, the battery mower and the battery scarifiers but ultimately we didn't use professional equipment. Uh, we used a little bit of professional knowledge because I did it as opposed to you. So what is the big difference? Now, the lawn we're on today, um, what we're gonna be able to do today is show that professional lawn care is not particularly uh, different. Um, what you gotta remember is what you're gonna get for professional lawn care. How do you choose a professional operator. It's not the easiest task in the world. Everyone is always the best lawn professional. Um, are they qualified? Do they have any sort of uh, lawn care exam qualification certification? Uh, enthusiastic uh, is not a qualification, but there are there certainly are certificates out there like the online learning course we have, for example. So how do you choose uh, a, a lawn professional to look after your lawn about, or do you decide to have a go yourself? So let's look at the pros and cons of professional versus DIY. First of all, you, you, when you hire a professional, you're getting someone who's working on lawns all the time. They're enthusiastic about lawns. Some will know exactly what they're doing, some may not. Some will be very just passionate about what they're doing, uh, but does that make it better than doing it yourself? Well, first of all, let's look at the operations that we do. So aeration, for example, um, does, a, does a lawn professional know more about uh, aeration? Probably, that's a guarantee. Can you use uh, a professional grade aerator? Well, you can certainly hire ones um, from hire shops and so forth, but you never quite know what you're gonna get. And whose advice do you take the, the hire shop that's suddenly a lawn professional? So you do get a lot of skill uh, when you take on uh, a professional, but it's not impossible to aerate your lawn. Then if we look at scarification, as we saw with the lawn over there with the battery power, uh, domestic scarifiers are available. Can you do a job with a domestic scarifier? Absolutely, yes. Um, you can hire, obviously, scarifiers from a hire shop as well. But again, are you getting a very good machine? Is it the right type of blade for what you actually need your lawn to be? That's where obviously a professional can come in and give you a little bit more uh, maneuverability about what type of machine. It's also uh, the fact that, um, do you want a machine for sat in your garage for one day, two days per year, perhaps, uh, as opposed to hiring a professional who's got those machines already there. Uh, and then if we look at the moss control and the feeding aspect, it's a lot of occasions where people say, well, you can't buy premium grade or professional fertilizers. Well, the true grass is actually putting that to bed now because it is the top of the professional range. It's not just a professional, it's the very top. So yes, you can do it yourself and you can use premium grade products. However, like I say, lawn care is a lot of hard work and every lawn professional out there who's doing it on a daily basis will tell you it can be physically demanding. Uh, so hiring a professional, you get a lot of benefits, but equally it doesn't mean you can't have a go yourself. Um, so what we're gonna do today is just show some professional machines as opposed to the domestic machines that we had. And uh, we'll have a little look to see whether there's a huge difference in how they do it and the result at the end. Now, one of the biggest areas uh, where professionals obviously have a, a, a leading hand over 
domestic lawn care is the use of herbicides. Now, I'm not particularly an advocate of herbicides. Uh, I think it's very much when you're in professional lawn care, it's something where the customer perhaps demands it more than, than you wish to do it. Um, this lawn, for example, um, this was a lawn we sort of started, um, not to manicure it, just to, to make grass the dominating factor, but we chose not to do any herbicide control. Now, when we started, this had probably 100% weed cover, um, but now we've made grass dominant. Um, we've probably got about 80 to 90% grass cover and the weeds are probably down to about 10%. So that's how good grass can be at, at, at weed control if you use the right type of species. So, so one, one thing that professionals do have, yes, they'll have professional grade herbicides. Are they applying them correctly? Let's hope so. They've uh, certainly got a qualification in, in safe practice, uh, which is, we call PA1, PA6. Uh, which gives you an understanding. It doesn't always, in fact, it doesn't give you a, an understanding necessarily about uh, the correct application for the correct product for the correct problem that you may have, but uh, somewhere along the line, we hope it does. Um, when it comes to domestic herbicide control, you're very, very limited with what you can buy in the first place, uh, and you will certainly have no indication as to the application rate uh, and the possible damage you can be doing. So choosing a professional to do herbicide control is a much, much safer option um, than, than anything else. However, I always think start with making grass the dominant factor. Weeds then will become a bit of a small issue uh, and hopefully, uh, like me, you, you won't even spray any herbicide at all. So this lawn, as we stand, you can see um, it looks quite green. It's very winterized, as you can see. Um, we've got a lovely tree that throws these bits of twiglet and, and so forth down. Uh, we're going to get those off before we start, of course. But this is a, what we call a native lawn again. This is bent fescue. Uh, it's an old property. Uh, it's got grass that's already growing here and already growing quite well, uh, just like the small domestic lawn that we showcased um, on, the, on the other video. So today we're, we're just going to be combing a bit of uh, moss out again. We're going to be combing a little bit of dead material out, the thatch, um, but equally we're going to be promoting and pruning that grass to regenerate and fill back in. So that's where we're going to see perhaps a, a slight difference, uh, or maybe not. So we're about to start the uh, professional lawn care operation. Uh, as you can see here, we've got, uh, we're still going to use a battery powered uh, lawnmower here, but um, I wouldn't call this necessarily uh, a professional uh, model, but they obviously do professional models as well. This is uh, one of mine that, uh, I like because of the battery technology. So the first operation uh, in our professional lawn care uh, operation is to mow the lawn. You can see the guys at the moment just getting the twigs off in preparation of that. So we're going to clean the lawn. We're going to take the height down a little bit so that when we do scarify, we're just removing the thatch as opposed to the top part of the leaf. It's just unnecessary, even though we've got uh, uh, a type of uh, professional scarifier here. You can see uh, after the video we did the other day with the little battery powered domestic scarifier, uh, this is more suitable for you know the, the larger lawn, uh, the thatchier lawn is very, very well built. This particular brand is a German brand and it is, it, it's got a color of a tank and it is a bit like a tank as well. Excuse the hat by the way, uh, in case you hadn't noticed, but um, it's blowing my wig off a little bit. So, uh, uh, so anyway, going back to this machine, yes, it's it's a lot more durable. It's going to cut through the thatch a little bit better, and because of the petrol uh, engine on there, it's going to slice through that material a lot, lot easier and put a lot less strain on that. We will try and work out on a three or four hundred square meter lawn how much fuel we actually use, but it's a small amount. Um, and if you do it once a year, that's the amount of fuel you're going to use. So obviously, there's some emissions on that, um, but that's exactly the same for most things. Uh, the next operation we're going to do, uh, as you can see here, we've got uh, 
a small professional uh, 30 litre sprayer from Team Sprayers, one of our wonderful sponsors. Um, so when you look at this, you can see that we've got a boom on here. So if you're looking to do the, the, your lawn and moss control, in this case, particularly accurately, um, with incredibly accurate um, calibrating, uh, using a machine that is gonna be two or three times quicker than using a, a knapsack like this, for example. This, this is a, a knapsack, which we, we do actually sell on the store. This is quite a, a reasonably priced model, to be honest, but the beauty of this, again, is that there's no pump action. This is battery technology, uh, very, very simple. Consistent spraying application for your moss control um, and herbicides, obviously, if you want to. And then at the very end, we have what we'd call a professional grade fertilizer spreader. These are incredibly expensive and are used by an enormous amount of people in the industry. Uh, they're very, very accurate. Uh, they're very well built. They're built of obviously stainless steel in, in the main and obviously a little bit of plastic as well. So again, uh, as long as you keep it clean, this is a professional model that will be very quick at doing your lawn. Um, so rather than the little hand spreader that we had previously, this has a, a swathe, I suppose we would call it, of about three to four meters. So it doesn't take very long to, to spread a lawn. So uh, we're gonna get on with those and we're gonna show you a little bit uh, of how each one uh, operates as it goes along, but I think it's time to get going. So there we go, we've uh, cut the lawn with our uh, semi-professional, professional type lawnmower. Um, we've cut it with a rotor, we've chopped it down probably about 25 mil, something like that, not too short, we're not scalping it. We've got quite a bit of uh, thatch and moss in here. Uh, so the next stage uh, is to start scarifying, making it look even messier. You'll notice that we've cut this in what's called a block cut. So you might be able to see the dark and light there. Um, it's just a very, very wide uh, stripy lawn um, and it saves a lot of turning at each end. So. Uh, let's get the uh, professional grade scarifier out and start uh, combing some of this thatch out. Now, what you can see here, th this is a native lawn, this is bent grass. Uh, it's a very old house, beautiful bit of grass that we've got on here. Uh, it often, as you can see, these sort of houses and these lawns get mown in the direction of the house sometimes. Sometimes they don't, but more often than not they do. So when you do scarify, you'll notice that the first pass that we put in is diagonally across from that normal um, mowing route, I suppose. The second pass that we're gonna put in on this lawn will be in the other diagonal as well. So when, you tra when grass sort of trains itself to go in its normal mowing direction, we're also gonna cut through those stolons uh, as well. So it combs a little bit more material out and gives a much, much tidier finish. Now, how much moss and thatch you remove is uh, always debatable, but one good sign and one good tip that uh, not many people uh, would perhaps look for. When you're, when you're scarifying a lawn correctly, what you'll be able to see, and you can see down here, this, this is showing you a nice consistent amount of thatch coming out. Um, when you get a, a machine that's digging too deep in the soil, pulling too much material, what you'll find, you'll get these sort of clumps where the machine simply can't get rid of it. You will have a big clump of grass here, and then you'll have another clump of grass down here. That's the machine going in too deep. It might be because your blades are a little bit too blunt, so you're having to go deeper to get more material out. But when you get that nice consistency through there like we've got, that's showing that you're combing the material out uh, and it's pulling the right amount of material out on each pass as well. So a very important tip and a good thing to look out for next time you are scarifying your own lawn.
So we got to the next stage. We've been interrupted with a little bit of uh, rain, but you can see that the lawn has now been cleared up. Uh, all the scarifying debris have been removed. We've moved a few tons worth of uh, uh, thatch, moss, etc. So the next stage, um, we put the mower back over. We've cleaned it up. This is sort of what professionals uh, tend to do a little bit. So now we've got to put the moss control, uh, the moss deterrent, whichever we call it these days. And professionals tend to use um, a version of different things. Sometimes they use knapsacks. Uh, some professionals use uh, wonderful little sprays like these, which are great. Um, if you're running a business, if you're doing lawn care as a professional, the use of this is going to speed your spraying up enormously. Uh, this has got a little two meter boom. It's battery, battery powered. Uh, it's got filtration. It's got a lot more accuracy about it, but it's a lot more efficient in terms of use. You can obviously get bigger versions uh, of these as well with bigger tanks. Uh, and this one is the one that most people use. Um, although these knapsacks are very good, Sadly, they tend to be um, very, very slow as well. So if you were looking at a comparison here, you've got probably 0.7 meter um, width of a spray on here. You've got two meters. So work it out. It's a lot, lot quicker. It's a lot more efficient. Now, this particular one is a battery powered, which means that we're going to get, firstly, it's going to be a lot more easy to use than the old diaphragm pumps where we literally have to pump the pressure. This one's got a battery that gives us a more consistent output as well. As you, as you use the diaphragm pumps, when you get slowly um, tired towards the end of the day, your output is gonna fluctuate up and down as well. And if you're using herbicides, that can be quite, um, quite dangerous. So this is one that we actually have on, um, on the site, on the store. Uh, it's, it's not, the, it's not um, the world's best one or most famous one, but it's a simple vestibule that carries water and then pumps liquid through it. You know, most people tend to buy names, brands, because they sound good. Uh, sometimes it's down to just a simple fact of realizing what it is. This is a vestibule to carry water. It has a nozzle, it has a battery, it puts it out there and it's far, far easier on your arm than using uh, a diaphragm pump. So there you go, all done. Um, what is the difference between professional and domestic lawn care? The truth is, it's very much down to whether you want somebody to, to do the job for you, whether you want somebody to perhaps be able to do it more professionally than you. Certainly it's a lot easier if you're watching someone uh, from a garden uh, room or, or uh, from in your house, having somebody do all that physical hard work. Uh, We've now put the uh, true grass down. We've also put the moss, moss X, I would call it, or moss control. Um, and really what, what, what we'll find and, and what you'll see with the lawn next to us, which we did with the domestic equipment, we're gonna see some comparisons. And, and these are lawns again, as I pointed out before, these are lawns just to look nice, just to do what they need to do for our environment. Um, we've utilized a little bit of fossil fuel on these ones because professionals tend to take on uh, bigger jobs than, than battery power can currently sort of give us, but there's certainly movement in the future towards that. Um, the products we're using are all very, very safe. They're very, very um, available to, to homeowners with the True Grass product now uh, and the moss deterrent as well. So. The difference will be perhaps quite minimal, um, but that's something that we're gonna see over the next few weeks. Um, as you saw, we did the domestic sort of lawn a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, temperatures are, are up in the double figures at the moment during the daytime, but we're still quite cold in the night. So things aren't jumping out the ground. 
but what we'll do is have a look at these in about a month's time and we'll see where we go so thank you very much for watching and uh, as i said before do hit that like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos and in the meantime uh, i'll see you very very soon Thank you.